Hi, everybody. I'm um, doing a little live inking tonight as part of Comics Camp 2020 and part of my ongoing project of drawing the Civil War Adventures of Freeman Colby uh, and the Civil War Diary of Freeman Colby. So um, I'm going to jump right in here. I've been setting up, I've been, I'm working currently in 1864 uh, and Freeman Colby is actually down in the Battle of the Wilderness, which takes place in this amazing forested area of Virginia called the Wilderness. Um, and this week in Comics Camp, we're looking at comics that are drawn from poetry. So I'm looking at the poems of Walt Whitman, who was actually down traveling around in this area in 1864. Uh, and I found this poem of his called A March in the Ranks Hard Pressed and the Road Unknown that really jumped out at me, that really seemed to be um, calling out from the experience of people like Freeman Colby and his regiment mates here. So what I'm doing in, in volume three, well, let me take a step back here. In volume two, I was drawing from Freeman Colby's letters, but also from other people's accounts. Like for instance, um, the accounts of nurses like Nurse Sarah Lowe, who's another New Hampshire participant in the Civil War. And I found I could use um, Walt Whitman's poetry actually, sort of interspersed between letters to show a different side of the war. So we're gonna, this is actually, we're gonna echo this. Uh, this is a passage where Walt Whitman visits a hospital in the city of Washington, DC and helps out with these terribly wounded soldiers. And he witnessed a lot of really difficult, really difficult stuff in those hospitals. Um, here in this poem, a march in the ranks hard pressed and the road unknown, Walt Whitman's actually going to bring us through a visit to a field hospital. So I'm gonna keep this poetry right here in front of me as I work, but I've actually started translating it into comics here. So we're just gonna ink a little bit of it here. I penciled it out and I know basically where stuff is gonna go on the page, but we might make some changes as we go. So I draw all my Freeman Colby pages on eight and a half by 11 paper. That's just standard size around here. Fits on any copier that I might take it to. I'm gonna put a title up here in the margin. Might use that title, I might not. I'm not gonna use Walt Whitman's poem title because this is a little different from his poem. I'm gonna use part of the poem, but not all of it. So we'll just say Field Hospital, working title. And we'll give him credit as Walt Whitman. This is my little Walt Whitman character who's traveling through the Virginian countryside in 1864, making trips down to visit the, um, the front a couple times. And he's always, always writing in his notebook. So here he is, he's an older fellow by this time. I think he's in his 40s, almost 50. He's very simple. He has a long white beard. He always wears sort of a dumpy overcoat, at least in my comics. And I've drawn him here with a pen and his little notebook out. He's going to be sitting on a horse going along with a unit that's marching, the ranks. He's not in the ranks himself. He's not a soldier himself. Whoops, let me just close the door here. All right. He's not a soldier himself, but he's traveling along with some of the regiments, visiting the front, helping out where he can, volunteering in hospitals. And this poem kind of documents that. Now, actually, I looked into this poem a little bit in the Walt Whitman archives. And actually this poem was written based on a story told to him by a soldier who, who did this and saw this. A march in the ranks, hard pressed. He spells it pressed, the archaic pressed. Um, so Walt Whitman wrote this as if he were a soldier experiencing this march and witnessing this field hospital scene. So there's a bit of a fiction worked into the poem itself. And now I'm taking the poem and I'm writing it as if he's a poet watching these soldiers go through this. 
I'm a cartoonist writing it as if the poets watching the soldiers go through this. There's a lot of different storytellers involved here. I like this. And this is why drawing from poetry is so different from um, drawing from letters and things because the way Walt Whitman presents this in a poem is not purely informational. He's trying to express something also. He's not just saying, here's where I went, here's what I did. Here's what I thought, here's what people said. He's really, um, he's trying to capture a mood also, which is really valuable to me as a cartoonist. Because in all these comics, when I draw Freeman Colby's letters or diary entries, Sarah Lowe's letters, I want you to feel like you're there with them, kind of experiencing it with them, right? I mean, why else sit here on a, on a hot summer evening drawing little stick figures over and over again? There's gotta be a reason for it. So I feel like this, this is how I try to understand what these scenes may have been like. So here we have a scene that was told to the poet, told to Walt Whitman. He wrote it down as a poem trying to capture it. And now we'll write it down as a, we'll draw it as a comic and it's going to change each time somebody kind of translates it into a different medium. But it comes, the primary source would be the, um, the soldier who was at White Oak Church, which was a battle, Falmouth, Virginia, 1862. And apparently as the Union forces retreated, Well, you'll see what happens, right? So one of the things I notice in this poem, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to use the poem as much as I can, but I'm also taking out lines that are in the picture. So march in the ranks hard pressed and the road unknown. That'll be next here. A route through a heavy wood with muffled steps in the darkness. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to draw the heavy wood in here, kind of leaning over. Uncle Walt, as he writes in his notebook, as he watches these soldiers pass, maybe these trees can lean a little more. Second of all, it's gonna be after midnight, it's gonna be late at night. They've been, probably these soldiers should be really dirty and tired and battle scarred and stained, right? Maybe they should have like bandages on their heads and not be really fresh and clean, right? And uh, also it's gonna be dark. So I'm not actually gonna go in and black in like the night sky with my marker because that would take a long time. It'd be really heavy. Um, it'd be really tricky to black all around these details, but I have a different plan. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna leave the night sky black. This will save me time and give a better result. I'm gonna leave the night sky black. In fact, I'll even put some I'm sorry, I'll leave the night sky white. I'll put some little stars like this in it, right? And then I'll go in and I'll scan this and on the computer, I'll invert those colors. So ultimately, where's an example? It'll look like one of these nighttime scenes from volume two. Oh, there's tons of them. There's one right there. So the night sky will be black and there'll be little stars above them. There's another page where I did that. And you get those that star effect in there. You can even get the words. I think these words will be white against a black sky, like on that page there, right? So that's a, that's a really cool technique. And I'll I'll do a separate live draw of how to do that. There's our first panel though. We're marching the ranks hard pressed. You can see they're in the woods. You'll see it's at night. So that saves me. I can leave out a line because Walt Whitman is really painting the setting in words giving us this sort of breathless list of details from this setting. And uh, some of that's gonna happen in our artwork. So we'll leave that out. Now here's my attempt here. I'm thinking one thing you can do, he, the next line is, and the road unknown. He doesn't know where he's going. They're marching at midnight after a terrible battle. No idea where he is or where he's going. He's lost in these woods, just following the unit as they march, right? One of the things I could do here 
And I almost did this. In fact, I sketched it out. He said, and the road unknown, and I showed a road going through some trees, right? And that's my first impulse often. But then I think like, well, wait a minute. Do I want to draw exactly what the words say each time? Do we need to do that? Why have the words then? Right? I want the words and the pictures to kind of add up to something bigger. What if I did the opposite? This is just an experiment. I don't know if this is going to stay in the book or if I'll change this later. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back to drawing a road for this panel. But I just thought, wouldn't it be cool if, and the road unknown, maybe this is like Walt's kind of looking up, trying to get his bearings, right? He looks up at the sky, can't recognize the stars. You know that feeling on a road at night, you look up, and you're like, wait a minute, which way is east? I'll put some stars twinkling at him up there, some little tiny constellations and things. And remember, this will all be black and the writing will be white and the trees, we'll put a couple more trees in there. The trees will be sort of white as if they're like shining in torchlight or something. There were a lot of night marches going on, of course, under harrowing situations, and this is probably one of them. The road unknown, this will be a very black panel, actually. You just have to kind of start, you just have to get used to like imagining this inverted. And then um, we'll do a separate live draw, we'll invert it and we'll see how it looks. And we'll keep it or we'll replace it. And it's not final till you send it to the printer, really, so. This is all an experiment. We'll see how this works. Now I'm doing exactly what I just said I usually try to avoid. The next line is muffled steps in the darkness. And I just wanted to draw the feet of the men marching. So maybe here I'm drawing what the words tell us. I don't know. But I wanted to connect it at some point. This is a... Uh, What's the line in the poem? Our army, uh, a route through a heavy wood with muffled steps in the darkness. So I took out a route through a heavy wood because here we have a lot of trees. Yeah. So here, and this is, I think I decided to draw these feet coming down and marching, these tired feet, because um, it gives a nice sense of motion to see lots of feet going by at different angles, different moments in the step. Maybe one stepping in here in the distance, a little dust rising. This will be dark behind them or maybe just black where the words are. I haven't decided that yet. There's a couple like canteens and packs and things hanging down. Maybe some texture on this road. It's a rough dirt road through the woods. At least in the wilderness it was. Remember, I'm moving this into the wilderness, 1864. It'll be a field hospital after a terrible battle there, which was, that was still a thing in 1864, definitely. Oh my goodness. Such fierce fighting going on there. All right. And this panel, actually in, in some other panels, I showed Walt Whitman watching the men march past and he's kind of talking about the sound of their feet on the ground. So um, that's something he kept coming back to and used really to show how they were marching. So I don't mind showing a panel of feet marching by again, because that'll kind of tie it into his other accounts that I'm using in this particular book. In February, and I think in March, he took a trip down to the front and went looking around all these camps and just wrote down in his little pocket notebook, constantly writing down notes of what he saw, which is so great for cartoonists and historians afterwards. After midnight, Walt Whitman writes in the voice of a soldier who told him this, we halt. I like to capitalize like the key words that I really want to emphasize. We halt at a crossroads. Now here I, I started drawing a crossroads, then I gave up because I realized I'm just gonna let the I'm just gonna let the text say that. I'll put a couple trees in here. Right, I'm cartooning, I'm keeping it as simple as possible. Stick figure cartoons, really their, their natural habitat is a simple background and a simple environment. 
but I'm working lots of details in here, so I have to be careful not to let it get too busy. But I want you to know those trees are there. We're in a clearing. That's the other thing. In the poem, he says, um, after, after midnight glimmer upon us the lights of a dim lighted building, we come to an open space in the woods and halt by the dim lighted building. A lar Tis a large old church at the crossing roads, now an impromptu hospital. So I'm changing his words here. Sorry, Walt Whitman. I got to change this just to fit it into the panels. Um, it's not a poem anymore, but I'm drawing it from your poem and I'll give you credit in the book. I'll say drawn from the poetry of Walt Whitman because I want people to know I'm not just making this stuff up, that this is a scene that Walt Whitman described and it, I think it's representative of what could have been witnessed by someone in this situation in 1864. So we'll use it for that. There's a couple soldiers here sitting on the ground, really tiny stick figures at this point, they're in the background. They're not part of the main scene here. Someone's laying down, they're so tired. Oh my goodness, they're so tired. They've been in a battle and now marching all night. So here in the foreground, I'm putting pretty small, Whitman's come down off his horse. He may have traveled. He doesn't say how he traveled. So I'm, I'm keeping it simple and just drawing a stick figure horse here. He may have been in an ambulance or a wagon, maybe on foot, I don't know. But since this isn't like a, a factual biography of Walt Whitman, but more like taking his story and working it in, I, I feel okay kind of making some guesses doing some guesswork and depicting it one way or another. Remember, this will all be black, white trees, white stars. Let's put a couple more stars in there. And then here is the big old church. Now, I was using, I was all set to show you a photograph, um, Alexander Gardner's photograph of the battlefield at Antietam, Confederate dead Antietam, Dunker Church in background. I was going to grab this small Dunker Church, um, which is not the church that was at White Oak Church, but uh, yeah, I was going to use it as a period church. But actually, just before we started here, I found a photograph. If you look up White Oak Church, you can actually find a photograph of the very building being described in this poem. So it's a little more barn-like, so I quickly re-penciled it here. This will all be black with white details. And I'll put by an old church right here on the building itself. I hope that doesn't look like a sign on the building. I hope it continues the sort of narrator voice of the poem. And then coming through the cracks in the walls and the rough boards, it's a pretty rough barn-like church. Coming through these cracks is the light, the glimmer he says in the poem. This will all be black. This one door here will be light white because that's where the light's coming from, right? There's our page. It's gonna be pretty dark. It's gonna be pretty dark just to bring out um, Walt Whitman and the soldiers. It'll be black behind them. And it'll be all black here, probably black pretty close behind them here, all black. It's gonna be a dark page, but it's, it's nighttime. And um, next, I think we'll stop there for now, but next, I actually penciled out the next page where he goes up to the door and looks in, but actually I went back and re-penciled it based on how big this church was and uh, what he sees inside. So we'll, we can do that next time. I wanna do this a little more, just some short live inking sessions as I'm working on pages. This'll be in uh, volume three of Freeman Colby, so that'll be, out, who knows when, I, I have no idea. I'm still working on it. I'm about 120 pages in and who knows, this will fit in around May or June, 1864. Little bit of creative work using a poem from Walt Whitman as told by a veteran, as told by a soldier to him from 1862, a little creative work to fit it in. Oh, and when he goes into this field hospital, I'll show you one more thing. I printed out this 
two page spread from uh, Harper's Weekly that is a battle as seen by the reserve in the Civil War. And this is not a church, but it is a field hospital. And these are the reserve troops who are being marched up towards a distant battle, but they're seeing all the injured and, and weary and bedraggled um, people coming out from the battle. And they're seeing what's going on in this field hospital. So I'm gonna mine this when I get, when Walt Whitman goes into this old church that is now a field hospital full of wounded, I'm gonna mine this to see what it may have looked like in there. Of course, it's gonna be a lot darker. It's gonna be inside a church. They'll be laid out on the pews. It's an intense scene, um, but that's that's a, a page or two ahead still. So next step is of course to erase this ink, but I need to give it a little extra time to dry in this humid weather. I should give it another five or 10 minutes to make sure every last bit is dry. I don't wanna smudge it at all. Then I'll scan it in and we'll start processing it to get the black areas in there, bring out the, the negative white and so on. Um, actually, I'll do a separate live draw, live process. Once I have it scanned, I'll come on here and I'll sh we can uh, go in panel by panel, convert it. It'll be actually faster than inking the page and we'll see if we like it. All right, so let me know what you think. Um, let me know how your comics are going. Good luck, everybody. Remember, Comics Camp 2020 is going on all summer. Join any time, pay what you can. Um, head on over and join the Patreon and you'll get updates on, on uh, this project and other stuff going on. Um, nice to draw with you. Thanks for stopping in. Um, thanks to the patrons and have a great uh, Wednesday evening, folks. See you tomorrow.